If you're using a virtual machine, you need to make sure that it is secure, or in other words, it needs to be hardened. We've already discussed physical isolation, so let's just revisit that quickly. You can have physical isolation in order to give you physical hardening. You could use a dedicated secure device as the host for the guest VM, giving you physical isolation. Both the host and the guest will be hardened and a separate device used for day-to-day -day use. The day-to-day -day use device is more likely to be attacked and get compromised. The secure device used less often and for more trusted tasks, meaning the host operating system and the guest operating system on the secure device are more likely to remain safe. Other physical measures you can use Using a USB network dongle instead of the host network adapter, as discussed already in the area on physical isolation. You can place the VM on a separate network to the host or for virtual isolation via a VLAN. This is to help mitigate attacks that come from the network from the virtual machines. Virtual machine leaks, as we've discussed, virtual machines can create on the host operating system unwanted log files, disk caching, and other evidence of the activity of your virtual machine guest, even if it's a live operating system like Tails or there is no virtual disk. Like in this example where you see that there is no virtual disk. It's difficult to know all of what is created by your hypervisor on your host operating system. So one approach to deal with this problem of all the unwanted host data would be to use whole disk encryption on the host machine as the mitigation against these leaks. If you have significant adversaries and high consequences, this would always be recommended anyway. And we discuss more on disk encryption and file encryption in its own section and we go into quite a lot of detail. So defense against leaks or one of the defenses against leaks, whole disk encryption. Not only can we do whole disk encryption to prevent the leaking, we could even create a whole hidden operating system from which we have the hypervisor installed and the guest VM running. This makes even finding or knowing that leaks exist difficult and it also provides plausible deniability. But of course, this only protects you when the machine is switched off, as the encryption keys are stored in memory when the machine is on. Another possible mitigation against unwanted storage on the host leaks from disk caching is to disable or delete the caching. Host operating systems usually use virtual memory called swapping or paging, which copies part of the RAM to the hard disk. There are also modes like sleeping and hibernating. It's possible to disable this functionality to prevent it from being stored to disk, but you should do this at your own risk as it's possible that it can cause problems with your host operating system. And we do cover more on clearing the page and swap in the section on evidence elimination. So if that's something that interests you, check out that section. Moving away from leaks now and onto protecting the data within the virtual machine, you can enable encryption using the hypervisor for each of the individual virtual machines. But obviously, again, this only protects them when they are switched off. Using the hypervisor's encryption is probably a less tried and tested solution than encrypting the operating system itself using more well-known encryption technology, such as Lux, File Vault 2, BitLocker, and Veracrypt, which have been subject to more public and community scrutiny than perhaps the hyperdriver encryption has. Enabling both encryption in the hyperdriver and within the operating system will slow down your virtual machine, but does give you defense in depth. You want to reduce the attack surface of your hypervisor. And here are some of the features that you might consider removing. You might want to disable the audio and the microphone and not specific to virtual machines. You might want to cover your webcam with tape, disable shared folders, Disable drag and drop and clipboard. Don't enable video acceleration, 3D acceleration. And do not enable serial ports. 
If you can, do not install VirtualBox Guest Edition or VMware Tools or Equivalent. That gives the operating system more access to the hypervisor and it gives the guest access to more of the host like the microphone and increases the attack vector. You want to remove the floppy drive and remove any CD or DVD drives. If it's a live operating system, you want to remove any virtual disks. Do not attach USB devices if you can help it. Perhaps a network dongle, but nothing else if you can avoid it. Disable the USB controller, which is enabled by default. When you disable the USB controller, this requires you setting the pointing device to be a PS2 mouse so that your mouse will work. Do not enable remote display server. Do not enable IO APIC or EFI. Enable PAE NX. NX is in fact a security feature. NX helps your processor guard the PC from attacks from malware and remove anything that's not used. If you are concerned about someone getting a hold of your device and local forensics, then use non-persistent operating systems like live CDs, live USBs, and don't add virtual storage when setting up the virtual machine. You can create your own custom live operating system so you go about installing whatever operating system it is that you want, configuring it in the way that you want, and then you can convert the virtual disk to an ISO and then boot from the ISO as a live CD. If you look at this link here, this talks through converting a virtual disk image to an ISO. You can use VMware snapshots to create non-persistence. You can use these snapshots for security for evidence elimination by establishing a securely updated virtual machine that has never performed any other activity than what you want it to have performed and then snapshot that VM. So for example, here would be the clean VM with no evidence and no history. This is your current state where you perform your activities. Then after you have performed your activities, you restore back to the original clean VM. This will remove any malicious malware, it will remove history, tracking, or any evidence of activity. This is not a perfect solution to remove evidence due to the previously discussed possibilities of data leakage remaining on the host, but it is a reasonably good solution for basic non-persistence. There are some security issues around the power saving features of your devices. If you pause or suspend your device when you have an encrypted virtual machine, the encryption keys are stored on the hard disk. This isn't safe unless you retain full physical control over the device. Again, in the same light, if you hibernate your laptop with whole disk encryption, the encryption keys are stored on the hard disk. This isn't a virtual machine issue, but this isn't safe either unless you maintain control over the device. If you put your laptop into sleep or standby, any whole disk encryption keys will be stored in memory. Again, this isn't safe unless you retain physical control over the device. If you're using encryption, either with a hypervisor or with a guest operating system, or with a host operating system, it is best for all of the operating systems, the guest and the host, to be logged out and shut down and switched off. Fully switched off, not paused, not suspended, not hibernated. This way, the decryption keys are not stored on disk anywhere.